was 1956. America stood at the pinnacle of its prestige, and the Rockefellers were the nation's first family, not only of wealth, but also of power. If there was an establishment in America in the 50s, it was these Rockefeller brothers. These young men have taken their place as these uh, absolutely unique members of a unique family. They're, in some sense, the very tip of this uh, kind of a, the American century, the American experience, this, this optimism that buoys America in the post-war era. They were, in many ways, at the center of business life, conservation life, environmental life, political life. They were in the middle of it. That's exactly where they wanted to be, and they loved it. Fortune magazine published a glowing profile of his grandchildren. Each brother was said to be worth upwards of $100 million. But more important than their wealth, Fortune argued, was the vast social empire which the brothers commanded. From their headquarters in midtown Manhattan, their influence reached into every sphere. Over the years, through the Rockefeller, philanthropic enterprises, charities, support of science, their business enterprises, a web had developed which spread out uh, and was interconnected with practically every center of power in, in our country and, and, and abroad as well. So this was the real strength and power of the family going well beyond money alone. Sometimes they would joke about it. They say, well, David, David gets Europe. Nelson is going to have Latin America, and, uh, you know, uh, John D. III gets Asia, and then they make some joke about what Winthrop got, you know, which would be something like Arkansas. Uh, but nonetheless, there was something really behind the joke. As many of you already know, the Rockefeller family is one of the wealthiest families on the planet, with independent estimates pointing upwards of 11 trillion U.S. dollars. The Rockefellers have a proven history of lying in order to conceal their true wealth. They own the majority stake of ExxonMobil, which is the world's largest publicly traded oil company and the world's largest company by revenue. Exxon holds the record for highest profits of any company ever. The Rockefellers also own J.P. Morgan Chase, which is the largest banking institution in America by deposits and market cap. Chase, in turn, operates the largest hedge fund in America. It was during David Rockefeller's years as chairman of Chase that he devised a plan to build the World Trade Center complex. And with the cooperation of former New York State Governor Nelson Rockefeller, the Rockefeller family commissioned the first designs for the World Trade Center. Along with the World Trade Center, the Rockefellers have been involved in many large real estate projects, such as One Chase Manhattan Plaza, the Council of the Americas, the Museum of Modern Art, Colonial Williamsburg, the Lincoln Center, the Embarcadero in San Francisco, and many more. The Rockefeller family has also been instrumental in creating and chairing various private and politically motivated institutions, including the Council on Foreign Relations. Moving beyond the Trilateral Commission and Council on Foreign Relations, the Rockefellers are also heavily involved in the Bilderberg Group. The Bilderberg Group encompasses influential players in the fields of business, media, and politics. They meet in secret locations once every four years and discuss secret plans. David Rockefeller is the original U.S. founding member of the Bilderberg Group, a life member and member of the Bilderberg Steering Committee. Bilderberg members include David Rockefeller Jr., J. Rockefeller, Zbigniew Brzezinski, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Tom Daschle, Chris Dodd, John Edwards, Tony Blair, Bill and Melinda Gates, David Gergen, Chuck Hagel, John Hines, 
Vernon Jordan, Henry Kissinger, Dan Quayle, George Pataki, current Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Bill Richardson, Paul Wolfowitz, and many more. Can you be specific about when you met Rockefeller, how it happened in these discussions? I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I had made a video called Mad as Hell, and uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me and knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him and I liked him, and uh, uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts. And um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event. And out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the New World Order, and we go after Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, sure enough, later 9-11 happened, and I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places, and, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, uh, which is no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. He told you it was going to be a hoax. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no question. He says, there's going to be war and terror. And he's just laughing. There's no... <laughs> Who are we fighting? 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this, war, this endless war on terror. This was... Uh, 11 months before 9-11, yeah. and Nick Rockefeller, he's a lawyer, he is, he, he's become your friend over the previous years, and he's saying to you that there's going to be this big event, and then out of that we're going to have a war on terror, and it's just going to go on and on. Right. An endless war on terror without, without any real enemy. That you can never, so you can never define a winner. And, and uh, did he say that it's going to be perfect because you can't define an enemy? It just goes yeah, on and on? Yeah, because you can't define a winner. There's no one who's on to beat, so it goes on and on forever. And they can do whatever they want. They scare the hell out of the American public. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to... Um, create a one-world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one-world government where everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them, all money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, any time you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. Everything is in there. And so they, they want a one-world government controlled by them, Everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intention.